Testing one, two. Testing one, two. We hear you, Big Bear. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you there, old partner. <sighs> I've always wanted to get a CB radio and be a ham operator. That would be cool. Oh, yeah. My brother was uh, kind of big time into that back in the, when the Smoking the Bandit came out. He was in Chicago, and uh, he had a business, Brandon Electronics, and they would put these, before the cell phones, they had what they call repeaters. It was like a one-way communication device, and they would put on the, on the um, like on the jet, Hancock building and stuff like that, you know, and do their CB radio talk. Well, my husband's big time old school, because he's seven years older than I am, and that's just him. And he always thought, gosh, that would be the best way. If, if it was up to him, he would have one of those instead of a cell phone. He's, I just got him a smartphone recently, uh -huh. very recently. He had a flip phone for the longest time. But he oh. would love to go back to the CB radio days. It, yeah, yeah. It seemed like it's pretty cool. Uh, probably amongst truckers also, you know. I think they actually still use them to keep private from the police. The, oh, the truckers? Oh, Probably so, I guess. And also to communicate from trucker to trucker, you know. Yep. You know, I was looking at the temperature this morning, and they said it was going to possibly snow. They, well, I'm in San Antonio. So I get up this morning, and I'm looking at, well, we're at 34 degrees. What is it like in Orlando? They're at 79 degrees, and we're on the same latitude. And I'm thinking, that's not, I'm not going to stand for this. Right, you, Congressman. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, yeah. You know, when I when I was, fix it. <laughs> when, when I was living in Texas, I was born and raised there, and I lived there for the first 16 years of my life. And I think it snowed every five years for like five seconds. And one year we actually had enough that we could build a small little miniature snowman, but it was never like the temperatures are now. Yeah, yeah, they say it snows here once every seven years. Back in 1980, I had my house at the house married at the time, 84, 83, something like that, and it snowed twice in one year. And the second time it snowed, you know, it, it only, like you say, it only lasts for a couple, it's only like three inches, and it lasts uh, maybe overnight, and it melts. By the time you build a snowman, it's melting, you know. Well, what happened was I have a... Uh, I have a, a thing I had to qualify for in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So after that, my test, passing my test, flew back, I f and I fell asleep on the airlines. And when I woke up, I woke. It was white stuff all over the ground as we're landing. And I wake up, and I'm like, I thought we left North Carolina, you know? And uh, it, it was like it snowed. God, a long time. We had about probably six, about a foot of snow, and uh, cars slipping everywhere. People were. Pulling out their skis and going skiing down these slopes, <laughs> you know, small three-foot slopes they had. Yeah. Well, you have nothing to complain about because when I moved from Texas to Ohio, when my parents moved me, rather. Uh oh. Uh, we moved in the middle of the yeah. school year. I got, I got, I got to. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Andrew's on the on the call right now. He's waiting. Oh, sorry. Hi, Andrew. Anyway, we moved in, and we moved into Ohio during the blizzard. So, for coldest years ever in the blizzard. All right. Sorry, Andrew. We're good. We're good. Good morning, everybody. Y'all guys got 80 degrees. We're at the same latitude as San Antonio. We got 34 degrees. It's almost zero. And I'm saying, that's not oh, right. I, I, uh, I'm not going to stand for it. I, well, I, I, I go by what I say all the time. You know, if you, if you live somewhere that's cold and you don't like the cold, then move. Yeah, we're not going to be. Move. Yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, te Texas birds flying uh, east. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. <laughs> that was loud. All right, we're going to go ahead and kick off. Um, we're, we're right on time. we got a bunch of people here, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and dive in. I appreciate you Good guys morning. being here. As morning. always, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some of you. Um, I've got a number of emails that I'm getting back to. I've got a couple of you I need to get in touch with. Um, let's see. So, on that note, uh, and I'm, I'm pushing, I should have a guest on with, it, uh, with me tomorrow, so I'm excited for that. We should have somebody to join us for our call, which is great. Randy and I sent you an email. Um, 
Not sure if you saw it. And then uh, I saw I it. Awesome. Good. On. So on that note, guys, all right, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, yesterday we talked about emotional intelligence. We talked about IQ and EQ, right? Everybody remember that? Did anybody get a chance to sit down and study a little bit about their EQ or EQ in general, emotional intelligence in general? No. Okay. So that looks like the, the majority of the, which is fine. I, you know, I, I say it's fine. Hopefully here's a challenge for, for all of you guys. We do this. We're here. I give you a little bit of homework <clears throat> and typically, hopefully what happens is that you guys hear that and you go, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I do want to say that. I want to see something about it. And maybe it's not super high up on the, on the priority. And I get that. What I recommend doing when you have those moments is even if it's immediately after this, even if it's for two minutes, for five minutes, if you, you have that thought, go and do it. Right. It's like the five second rule, Mel Robbins, one of the books I have you guys read. If you got that thought, if it's not going to severely interrupt your day, it's not going to cause a traffic accident. You know, no one's going to die because you haven't, you take five minutes away. We finish here. We wrap up, take five minutes and go do it. Just pull up another link, look it up, read a little bit about it. Even if you don't get in depth with it that little bit subconsciously starts to create those habits, right? We've talked about this. Do the little things to create the habits. I promise over time, those start to stack up, right? It's the 1% over and over and over and over again. It hey, Andrew, it's Felicia. I, I actually, uh, the first book I started reading was The Five Second Rule. Yeah. I was absolutely wowed by that book. And I read through about half of it in one sitting because I could not take my mind and my eyes off of it. It was Good. riveting and it was so impactful. Everybody Good. needs to read that. that yeah. It's, so it's one of the books. Talks too. Yeah. She got a great Ted talk. Um, absolutely. Mel Robbins got a lot of great stuff, a lot of good stories. Um, but yeah, that should be one of them. And if you don't have time to read it right now, then get on YouTube, watch one of the five, seven minute animated summaries. But the point of all of this is that when we get done here, that's the five second rule by Mel Robbins. Also, the this summary right of the cash flow quadrant was excellent as well. Yep. Yeah. So whichever book you guys pick, then, um, yeah, there's audio for a lot of these books. I mean, I've got an audible um, subscription because I listen to books as I'm working out. Uh, but the, a lot of them all have audio too. I know Cashflow and Secrets of the Millionaire Mind both have audio available on YouTube if you want to do that. Big Leap, I believe, does too. So anyway, the point of all that, guys, is just take a minute to do that. Hopefully after this call, I'm, we're going to continue into emotional intelligence a little bit. We're going to go over some of the main categories within emotional intelligence. We're going to talk about some of that. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of things to jot down. Hopefully you take a second and go do some of it, Okay. Can everybody commit the, to themselves? I don't need you to commit to me, but I will absolutely follow up tomorrow. Can everybody commit at least a minute to go, yep, I'm going to do that. Yes? Yes. Yes. Good. Um, but just Andrew, one other, just two minutes afterwards. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just one other comment about that. I went on to Overlook or whatever it's called for digitally getting stuff from my library. So I didn't even have to pay for it. I just got it out of my library and I could either get the book and and read it or I could get the audio book and that was a great way to do it and I got that on my tablet it was fabulous there there are ways to do it I will say and and I'm not trying to to pick on you Felicia this is this is my feeling because I create content online um a lot of these people you know they're authors and everything stuff on YouTube um summaries and they have a ton of comment themselves there's a lot of free content available in the world today typically if it's something like if they've written a book if it's on Kindle you know, it, it's a, a few bucks. If it's on Audible, it's a little bit. But part of that, honestly, it goes with Secrets of the Mirror Mind, right? If I'm willing to invest in it, it, it means more long term. Um, everybody's a little bit different. I'm not trying to pick on you for that. But if it's something that's copyrighted, I and and for a number. Yeah, support the artist because um, I know we've got some freelancers on here, too. Right. But um, I mean, for other things, you know, for liability reasons, like I'm never going to recommend someone, hey, go find it for free there there's a lot of places you can find free work. And if that's the route you want to go, it's always your decision. If it's something that's available and I can support them, um, 
you know, then that's great. Like I, I have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. You know, I only pay Amazon 10 bucks a month to be able to read a lot of books. And I do, I will typically read, you know, I'm somewhere between a 12 to 15 book a month reader is kind of where I'm at. A lot of those, they only get a little bit from Amazon if they're on the Kindle Unlimited. And I get that. So I will find some of those authors if I really like them, if they're, you know, because I do read some not or some fiction stuff. And then I've got some others that are, if they're a personal developer or something, I'll go and I'll find their course or I'll find their Patreon or I'll find somewhere and I'll just say, hey, here's, you know, I've got one guy that I, I love. Yeah, their websites, there's ways to find them. Um, and then I will, yeah, and, and Felicia, if you're getting them first and then you want to keep notes, absolutely, there's different apps that allow you to do that. I'm just, just wanted to throw that out there because occasionally, and it's not, you like I get a lot of times we're like, where can I find it for free? Where can I find it for free? And I'm like, if you're going to do it that way, that's up to you, right? This is the way I do it. All right, I'm going to step off my, um, my soapbox now. We're going to dive in. Let's talk a little bit more about um, emotional intelligence. Good. Does anybody have any quick questions about what we talked about yesterday before I dive into this? This stuff Andrew, specifically. I have you, one. I, I have one. I was not able yes. to get on the call yesterday due to I got into accident in the morning. Uh, but where do I find yesterday's call? I was looking for it, but I was not It'll able be to there. It It'll be there when we're done, and I'm going to put these slides underneath it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Share my screen. Okay. All right. So... Uh, emotional intelligence. These are kind of the building blocks of it. So self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management, right? It starts with us. You cannot be emotionally aware in, in, in public without being completely self-aware and hopefully having some humility, because if you are socially aware and you're trying to manage others. So here's part of this. This is, this is my point of view, guys. If I'm my relationship management, I am, I am managing how I react in certain situations, how I react to conflict, how I influence what's going on, that teamwork, that leadership. Otherwise, I feel like it's manipulation, right? I'm not trying to manipulate someone else's outcome, behavior, thoughts, or emotions. I'm trying to understand them. Now, I'll get into that when we get into the social awareness and relationship management, but I occasionally there's those thoughts that come up. I've had people bring up certain things and I'm not saying any of you are, but <clears throat> it begins with always self-awareness and self-management. Okay. So the emotional awareness is those self. So let me get into some of these aspects. Paul, I know you're taking notes. The slides are going to be there later on. <clears throat> self-awareness is our ability to accurately perceive our emotions in the moment and understand our tendencies across situations. Self-awareness is understanding not just my skills, my talents, and how I'm spending my time, but Ray and I are sitting having a conversation and he says something about my shoes that I don't like and I get offended. Understanding why that anger is there and then where that tendency comes from and what's going on and why am I feeling that way, right? You're having a conversation with your significant other and it seems like you've been short lately. Why are your emotions on edge? Sometimes it's being aware of those emotions, but sometimes it's why is, you know, what physically is going on in my life that's causing that, right? Why am I bringing that here? Being aware of your emotions. Then understanding your tendencies is important. It helps you make sense of what's going on with the emotions. <clears throat> with that said it requires a willingness to tolerate the discomfort of focusing on feelings that may be negative quit running away from them okay stop running away because emotions always serve a purpose there's a reason that they're there right and many of us struggle with self-awareness because we don't want to deal with why we're upset that's why we get upset we we run away and you know, that's where alcohol comes in or drugs. That's why, well, I've got to go to the gym. Well, I, you know, I need to just turn on music and zone this out. You walk away from arguments, like whatever it is. And most of the time it's because we don't want to feel what we, we're feeling. 
which is normal, but instead of recognizing what's going on and, and understanding what's there and why that tendency is there and, and working our way through it, especially us men, like we're so good at just, I'm going to shut it up. I'm going to box it up, right? I'm going to compartmentalize it. I'm going to walk away. You've got to take some time to think about what makes you tick. Okay. Now, a couple of things about emotions. I'm going to make this a little bigger here for you. Three key parts. Because emotions are a little bit different for all of us. Okay. There's a subjective. It's how you experience it personally. Right? Because we all react to emotions in a different way. And, and what's going on around us and the environment and everything else. There is a physiological component to emotions, fear, anger, sorrow, happiness. There are hormones that are released and we react differently to those hormones. And then the expressive side is how we then behave in that. So why am I feeling what I'm feeling? What's going on? How is my body reacting? Now, how am I going to behave in response to that? I mean, you guys have ever felt your body, the physiological component without necessarily recognizing, at least to begin with, that you were feeling the other sides of like where that emotion was coming from, where like you're anxious and then you stop and you go, oh, well, I did have that conversation earlier. Maybe it's just been catching up to me. My body's finally reacting to the adrenaline or the sorrow or whatever. If I, if I might. Yes, Rick. Someone going to say something? No? Okay. All right. There we go. Okay, I'm unmuted now. It's important that we don't confuse emotion with choices. For example, anger is not an emotion. It's a choice. You can choose to be angry. You can choose to not be angry, but it's not an emotion. It may... It, don't get me wrong. It may get tied up with a bunch of emotions, but well, so I was how we itself react to, not an emotion. I, I think we're almost stepping into semantics, right? No, we're not. Because, okay, B believe me, we. I had to learn this stuff. Okay, I, I'm not sure. I'm not a licensed psychologist. I'm not sure what you know. Well, the I'm doctors not either. I'm say. just a pastor. I, I would say. I would say that. Because I can feel anger and then how I react to it, whether I allow, you know, because I'll, I'll feel those. I believe anger technically is underneath the emotional list is what I'm saying. It's not. It's under the choice list. Emotions, you don't get any choice in. You feel emotions. You feel jealousy. You feel fear. Right. Those come up. Anger. You can choose to not be angry. So is anger then an emotion? Anger is an emotion characterized by antagonism towards someone or something you feel. Well, I don't think so. That's the American uh, Psychological yes. Association. Okay. So, um, according, to what he, according to what he just said, he said fear is an emotion. How you respond to fear, is, it falls along the same line as how yeah. you respond so to anger. We're talking, you can give it a feeling. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting into so the American... Fear. So, again, and... and Lisi Hale says his psychology major is fantastic. So according to the American, um, the American Psychological Association, anger is an emotion. How we react, what we do, if we allow it to simmer, all of those things is exactly what I'm talking about with the self-awareness. So, so I know we're getting into semantics, but sometimes the semantics are important. If we look at it, yes, it's, it, it's an emotion. And sometimes the immediate, some of these things are a visceral physical response that at times are trained into us because of nature or nurture, right? How we react then and what we do and how we control that reaction, how we break it down and why am I feeling this and what's going on? Because I can be angry without outwardly portraying that anger and then going into everything, right? Yeah. So, and it, there is no, there is no hundred percent black or white. So Rick, and, and you're always on these, so I know you're able to have a conversation without us getting, you know, angry with things. I, I'm simply saying it's anger, happiness, joy, all of these things, what we need to do more of, 
And the point I'm, I'm really kind of just trying to get across is that we're all put into situations where something happens. We feel something. And more often than not, we don't pay enough attention to what we're feeling, why we're feeling it. What is going on right now? That leads to then that next step of, of a lack of control and what's going on, right? So we have awareness and then we have uh, management and that's kind of where I'm rolling into. So, um, so and, and that's where, look, there's, but everybody's looking at that. Is, is it an emotion or a feeling? Is there this or that? Is it a choice or primary emotion, right? So all of this is here. In a situation, anger, irritation is primary. And then there's this. And, and so it, but understanding all of this, guys, how we react is really the most important thing. So Rick, if you come to, um, you know, moments of, personal epiphanies to help you understand certain things and how you're reacting to what's going on and it's helped bring clarity to that. That's honestly, in my opinion, the most important thing, you know, you can call this, like, if it helps you see something, as long as we're not in this case, it's, it's something simple. As long as you're not deluding yourself in your, uh, you're not being delusional in what your reaction really is. Like you're saying it's this, but it's really, you know, oh no, I'm not overreacting. How many of you guys have had that? Hey, you're overreacting and you're not, or you really, you know, you're saying I'm not overreacting at all, but really you're at a 10 or you're at a 12 on the reaction scale, right? We've all seen that. Social media has brought us all sorts of examples with that. So I, I anyway, think, I think understand parts think, of an emotion. Go ahead. Um, I think sometimes too, in order to control the emotion or, or to make sense of it, you have to understand the root of it, where it stems from. Because until you deal with that, you won't know how what's causing you to feel that way. You got to go yeah. back to the beginning. Yeah. Like you was talking about nurturing. I realized in my relationships in the past that my aggression or anger towards my, my per, the person I was with at the time stemmed from things that happened in my youth. Right. And I had to I had to understand that in order to understand why I was feeling that way. And then I was able to deal with it. But up until that point, I couldn't. Yeah, that's where the awareness comes in. Where is this coming from? What's going on? Right. So it's the emotion in the moment and the tendency across situations. So where is it coming from? And that's where the, the willingness to tolerate the discomfort, because sometimes you need to look at that emotion instead of just shutting it off instead of finding a way to just dull it, right? So, okay, next, a couple of things for self-awareness. Use these slides. Here's a couple of things, right? First, stop identifying certain emotions as good or bad. Sometimes emotions just are. The initial, how we respond, what we do, and if we allow ourselves to continually feel it for no reason without evaluating it, that's where the problem comes in, right? There's things like guilt or jealousy or anger or whatever. A lot of times we just go, that's bad. No, it just is. Sometimes it just is. And sometimes it's just like, you know, you were talking about there. It's a reaction from something that happened 30 years ago. And if you're having a reaction now because of something that's ingrained in the past and it's going to take time to deal with, if every time I feel that, I go, man, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Now I'm telling myself I've got a problem when sometimes I just need to identify it and work my way through it. So that's where then the ripple effect. So if I'm reacting in this way, where is it taking me? What pathway is it going? Right? Leaning into the discomfort is, is that moment of, okay, peel back the, the onion layers and deal with what's there. Understand what, what and who push your buttons. I don't deal with those things, right? I, not that I am unwilling to, but I've come to the point where I understand what is going to ratchet me up and I will diffuse it either before it happens. And all you guys know what I'm talking about. You've gotten into conversations and you know where the conversation is going to lead to, you know, and it's always those things. It's going to be something about family. It's going to be something about a relationship. It's going to be something about money, politics, religion, whatever, right? We've all got our list. And you know the question or two that's going to lead down that, that pathway. Figure out what those buttons are. Stay away from them. Watch yourself. Pay attention to you. We talked about keeping a gratitude journal. We talked about writing down your accomplishments during the day. Write down some of your emotions as well. This happened. I reacted like this. Not in a, I can't believe what this happened. Not in a, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? But in a, this happened. This is how I reacted. This is what I'm working to do, right? That kind of thing. 
take a moment to stop and ask why you do things and then revisit those core values that we've talked about a few times, okay? That's how to become more self-aware. Self-management, this is what happens when you act or don't act. I start to feel something or something comes up. This is when I act or don't act, right? Um, this is the ability to use awareness of the emotions to stay flexible. So yeah, I'm feeling this. Here's how I need to react. Like if I'm aware, I can flow with it. Self-management is revealed by your ability to tolerate the uncertainty you explore as you explore your emotions, right? You can control how you react. Yep, that's the only thing you can do. It's like the initial, I'm so mad at this, right? Just stop, breathe, what's going on, right? Okay, real emotion or real results come from putting your momentary needs on hold to pursue the larger, more important goals, right? Those conversations we have, or we set aside how we're going to react. Okay, here's a couple of things from the self-management side. A couple of key things that you can do to help with self-management. Breathe, emotion versus reasonless. Why, you know, I feel this because of that. Why, or this happened and I feel this, right? Take a moment and count to 10, sleep on it. We've talked about that before. This whole idea that you have to solve every problem before you go to bed, every argument, you know, we never go to bed arguing. I, why? You stay up till three o'clock, you get, you're more tired screaming at each other. No, knock it off. Right. Smile and laugh more. Some of you guys, you got, you got too much of the, like the frown lines in your face, smile and laugh more. Enjoy life a little bit more. Okay. Set aside time each and every day to solve problems. Like this is when I'm going to deal with what's going on that's, that's causing frustration. Visualize how you would react in certain situations. Visualize what you would do if something comes up, positive and, and not positive, negative, just with different emotions, right? Because we're not doing good and bad. We're doing just emotion. Sleep hygiene. All of you probably need to sleep more. If we look at the number of you guys on here, how many of you are, have proper sleep hygiene, sleep habits? It's probably not nearly high enough. Sleep makes a huge difference. If your sleep is out of whack, your emotions are going to struggle. Okay. Uh, looking at freedoms versus limitations. And then someone to look at uh, the situation that isn't invested. Ever heard that? Like get that, that third opinion. Someone that's not involved in the situation. Have them help out. Right. Get a mediator in a divorce case. All right. Next, social awareness. This is part of what I was talking about yesterday. Picking up on other people's cues, understand what's going on. If you're, this part about getting caught up in your own emotions um, happens a lot. Not just at a party uh, where he's talking about his perspective of the other party, the other person. A lot of times we do that where we don't pay attention attention to the other person and what's being said and what's going on and the overall scope of the how, what, and why of the conversation that may be happening. And we're just trying to get our own, our own thoughts in. Let me tell you what I think and why I'm right. Okay. And then the next one is pretty straightforward. We've all heard that. How many of you guys have heard two ears, one mouth, right? Listening is more important. Listening and observing takes practice to really watch people as you interact with them and get a good sense of what they are thinking and feeling. We are beginning to lose more and more often this ability with social awareness and social management. Why do you guys think that is? Why is our social awareness going away? What's happening with social awareness? A lot of it has to do with not people not personally interacting anymore. People are sitting in the same room and text each other you know and stuff like that you know that that personal communication is fading away yeah yeah they sit across the table from each other and text each other and yeah. they could be talking you know there's times to put phones away i can't tell you how many times i've gone to a restaurant or gone somewhere and every single person is isolated by by focusing on their phone and everybody around them even when you go to a dinner or you go out to eat or go to whatever you see everybody, including their, their kids, on devices. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, people's face are in their phone. Uh, David, attention span. I, I've mentioned this before, but there's a crazy statistic that I, I need to look for the 
study. I know our, our attention spans are much shorter, but I've seen a couple of studies saying that many people's attention span is now shorter than a goldfish, less than eight seconds, right? Yeah. Kids, I mean, I have young kids and um, they don't have any social awareness, like because they haven't learned to control their emotions yet. So then right. they blurt out stuff in text that I would, and without even thinking, and I always, I have to give my daughter heck all the time. I'm like, don't say anything on there that you wouldn't say to that person if they were right in front of you. Right. Because first off, it's on paper now. Yeah. Like, and, and so like when you look at that social people. awareness, yeah. So how many times have you got, you know, you sent a text or you've received a text and you go, what the hell? Yeah. What do you mean? And then go, no, that wasn't, you know, there's you can't do the emotional side very well. Right. Yeah. You don't get the expressiveness that comes with an actual conversation. Yeah. So it now falls on us that Okay, I used to wear my emotions on my sleeve. I have my mentor say to me, if you have $360 at your house and someone comes in and steals 40, are you going to um, come in and say, are you going to throw the rest of your money away? I told her, no, I, I can't change it. Her response, well, you, who the F are you, what you feel you can do with that time. But yeah, so essentially um, throwing away the time in the day is kind of what you're talking about, I think, right? I think that's what it is, 10% of your time. But part of this, so now it falls on our shoulders with the social awareness because so many people, so many others are not socially aware. You have to be more socially aware, right? And, and so many of us are already lacking in this by nature. Many of us, not all of us are, are empaths. Not all of us have kind of that. Now, I, I will say this too. Typically, women just studies and, and over centuries, this isn't just some weird stereotype. Typically there's a higher level of charity and empathy within women, right? There just, there is than men. So gentlemen, if you have that Y chromosome, you've got to work harder to pay attention, to pick, to pick up those cues, right? That's, that's just the reality. You know, how many times have they said, well, you know, why haven't you, we can't read their minds, but we can do as much as we can to pay attention to other cues. And all of you know, some of the cues with your significant other, you walk in, you go, Oh, something, she's happy. She's frustrated. She's nervous. They are frustrated. They, you know, where, whoever the partner may be. Um, but you've got to spend more time becoming more aware. And this isn't just with your significant other. This is in general, you've got to do this. Now, how do you do that through social media? Then it's really trying to pay attention to a flow of conversation is it's being willing to step back and not be you know the internet troll that responds right away because occasionally as you guys get going as you start marketing you're going to once in a while get somebody that comments and says something that goes hey and you'll get some attacks right it's happened more than i care to share i've gotten some that were incredibly personal and many of them are completely baseless because they haven't spent any time looking at the overall picture or listening to my actual story or anything else. Yeah. This is what's going on there. How can I react in a way to either diffuse or whatever, but being socially aware is important, right? So, um, and understanding that you need to be more socially aware now than we used to have to be. So here's a couple of things that you can do. First, if you're in a conversation on the phone or in person, stop monologuing in your head. Because I know there's some of you right now that are wanting to jump on and give your comment right now. You're not paying attention at all to what I'm saying. You're just, you're waiting for your moment, right? When you do that with your significant other, especially, just stop. And occasionally just stop talking. Just shut up. Right? Stop anticipating the end of their sentence because you know, you're sitting there with, with bated breath and you're like, okay, right? Just stop that. Um, I've talked on a number of occasions about Brendan Burchard. He's an amazing author, motivational speaker, business coach, everything else. Brendan, I've had a chance to meet on a number of occasions, standing and talking to him. This was years ago. First time I met him, probably maybe 15 years ago now. I meet him and he's standing there and he's talking and he was the most present individual I've ever met in my life just so present, just there. 
and engaged and not engaged in a false way. He was legitimately paying attention to what I said. And here's this guy who is, he's asking a couple of questions and I'm going to get to that. He knew what to ask and how to make me feel like at that moment, I was the most important person at that mastermind, right? He was focused on me. Do that with others. And I promise it will make a difference in what you're doing. Okay. So here's a couple of key points there. Uh, it's your ability to, oh, now we're into social awareness. Okay. I jumped ahead. Am I jumping ahead? Yeah. All right. Well, I got my slides mixed up. Um, this one, that's what I was looking for. So here's a couple of things. Greet people by name, watch their body language. So that means you have to actually pay attention to someone when they say what their name is. And look in the face, like the, I found it really, really, really important with uh, with people, like looking so at their face. Yeah. Did anybody anybody have issues um, making eye contact? No. No. Why? Some of you guys do, and I know. Well, and, I'll and say sometimes. So first, <laughs> I was going to ask ahead, you a Austin. question, Andrew. Um, I think sometimes it depends on my comfortability with the person, but also it's um, not to say that I'm not present with the person, but you know, there's some times where I want to make sure that I'm showing that I'm aware, but I'm not like staring them down. Right. Well, right. there's, there's, there's a paying attention and there's making eye contact and then there's just being creepy. Right? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. You know. I, when I start feeling creepy in my own mind, it's like, well, let me just look away or blink or, you know, <laughs> do something. Yeah. And just make sure you're blinking normal. It's not like this slow blink <laughs> and opening your eyes. Actually. Yes, absolutely. There are, you know, there are different ways to do that without being, uh, you know, a sociopath for sure. No, but, I'm not, some cultures, I'm not, though, that don't do eye contact. What's that? Aboriginal cultures don't do eye contact. There's some cultures where eye, eye contact is kind of a no-no. So you have to kind of be culturally being aware. Cultural, being culturally aware is part of yeah. social awareness. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. right? The, the Japanese um, don't make eye contact. So. Okay. Japanese definitely. The Japanese yeah. definitely don't make eye contact. Yeah. So if you're in certain cultures, totally agree, guys. There's, there's a time and a place. But you can pay attention and know what's going on. Right. Yeah. This. So there is um, in, in BNI, I've mentioned this before, but there's the the 12, 12 and 12. It's it's the you know, how do you look at 12 feet? Right. So imagine we're in a social and I know this isn't there's not a whole lot of this going on right now because of COVID. Um, but let's imagine the world gets back to some semblance of normal and we have social interaction again on a on a regular basis. How do you look at a distance? Meaning, how are you dressed? right? Are you clean? Are you wrinkle free? Do you look okay? Are you not a slob? How do you look at, they say 12 inches. So that's like the initial shaking the hand, stepping back, right? Stepping out of the bubble, right? Yeah, absolutely. Felicia agree. So stepping out of someone's bubble, I'm not trying to be, you know, super up close and personal. You don't want to get too crazy with them. Um, but how are you there? And part of that is how are you looking at them? How do you smell? right? Have you not showered enough? Is your deodorant wrong? Do you have too much perfume or cologne on? Because we've all run into those people too, and you can't stand being around them either, right? How's your breath? Obviously with a mask, maybe you're not smelling my breath as much, but, you know, make sure that that's not awful. How is your handshake? If you're shake, if you're in a culturally appropriate situation where handshake is part of what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, guys, we all, there, there are absolutely, there's going to be some of those and we could go into crazy introductions in, in all sorts of different places, right? You know, certain places, central and, and central South America and into Europe, you're kissing people on the cheek that you've never met before, right? That was, that was awkward for me. I'm like, what's going on? You yeah, know? here in, here in Colombia, we, we, yeah, you know, kiss, kiss, <laughs> And then you'd have, and you know, and don't be the creeper that's like the kisses all of a sudden are like, and you're, you know, you're backing up. Like we, yeah, don't leer. Don't be the one sitting across, you know, the, the room just staring. You know, you've got a prospect that you want to connect with and you're just, you're eyeing them down. Like don't, obviously, yes. But all of that social and personal awareness, 
And part of that too goes to what we were talking about yesterday, people on the spectrum, or if you are, if you lack in emotional intelligence, some of us are laughing about this, but some of this like, guys, that's, that's normal for some people and they don't understand that there's something wrong. So if you're one of those people and guys, there is, there's the level of people that do that, that, that are wrong. And then there are some people that do that, that are wrong, that don't understand that they're wrong. Right. So I'm talking to those people because we may have some of those people on the call. So to be sensitive there, if you've had some people over and over and over say, man, what are you looking like that for? Or what about this? Or what about like, if you've had those comments and you go, I wonder what's going on, then step back and spend a moment and, and start to understand the, especially the social awareness and social management aspect of emotional intelligence. And all of this can be studied, right? I'm giving you some stuff here, but take a look at yourself. If you've ever had those comments and you're not the oblivious asshole, but you're someone that's going, I wonder what's going on. Why is that happening? Why is that being said? Spend some time and understand those emotions for you, right? So let me review just a couple more things here real quick and, and we'll wrap up for today. Um, so Pay attention, plan ahead, meaning have some questions, have some ideas ahead of time, some topics to talk about so you're not just standing there. And I don't just mean, oh, look at the weather. Oh my gosh, COVID. Oh my gosh, politics. Like, Stay away from stuff that's going to be BS just to get people worked up. Ask questions that are going to be relevant to them. Pay attention to emotional EQ in, in movies. I think this is always interesting. This was a, a suggestion that I saw. I like watching to, to watch the overacting, the overreacting right? Like that's obvious. Like, what is that? Like, that's not happening. Especially if you're looking at drama and romance movies. It's like, no, people don't, don't do that. And no, the way he pursued her was creepy as hell. You wouldn't do that. Right. So anyway, learn how to listen, understand the whole picture, put yourself in their shoes. Then we get into, um, you know, relationship management. So using your awareness of your own emotions, and what's going on with others so that those interactions go okay. What are they feeling? How am I feeling? How do I make sure to either continue this happiness that we're feeling or de-escalate de -escalate what's going on? Uh, the bond you build with others, the weaker connection you have with someone, the harder it is to get your point across. If I don't have a connection with you, you're not going to listen. That's it. Same thing goes, do, do we understand how this applies to marketing? They buy from who they know, like, and trust. They can't connect with you. If you make it hard to connect, it's going to be harder to get your point across, right? And don't be this person. Well, here's what you want to do. Don't seek a benefit though. Okay, so you want to seek a benefit from every relationship you have. Don't seek a benefit without being willing to um, give benefit. And, and I'm not talking about friends with benefits. We're talking about helping others on an emotional level and being of value in every relationship you have. Don't be a burden emotionally. And if you feel like you're a burden, then just become aware why and work on you. Don't beat yourself up, right? Because I know some people, especially if you're feeling a little bit of a depression, there is a feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm just a burden on those around me and this and that. And sometimes it comes from, uh, just a, the lack of self-awareness or the depression or this feeling of self-worth, right? Work, be willing to work on you guys. Okay, so those are the elements. We have self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, social or relationship management. You know, understand, take care of yourself, both emotionally, sleep, food, everything else. Don't be the diva. Um, you can build the relationships just like the new cells, if you've been acting a certain way for your life, understand you've got to continue to grow in other ways to change who you are in the future. Um, so here's the basic challenge. Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, social management. Pick one of those skills. Pick a couple of strategies. Just look, you know, or here's, forget about that. That's almost too much right now. Here's my challenge to you guys. Please take five minutes after this. Take five minutes and look up emotional intelligence. Read a little bit about it. If one of those elements, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, social management, if one of those stood out more, then look that up. How can I get better at self-awareness? How can I increase my self-awareness? How can I better work at my 
relationships. Just spend five minutes after the call today, sometime in the next five hours. This is my challenge. I'm going to give some of you guys a window because I know some of you guys are at lunch. Sometime in the next five to six hours, get online and look something up. YouTube, Google, an article, something somewhere. Can everybody commit to at least that? Yes? Good. Do that. I'll have this recording up as soon as it's it's done um, processing. I'll have these slides up so you've got them. But guys, take a minute. Go and do that. Go be fantastic. Join me tomorrow. Should have a guest on. Good. We got a lot of yeses. Let's see how many of you guys fulfill it. Go be fantastic today, guys. Love you much. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.